Good evening, everyone. It's late in your day today, but I've got both good news and bad news to share. Let's get the bad news out of the way first. As we've heard and we know, the way we farm our lands and mismanage our forests is literally killing our planet. It's also killing our farmers. In India alone, over 12,000 a year, in the US, farmers are twice as likely to commit suicide as the general population. There is no state in India, my country, where the average farmer is not in significant debt. Indeed, the level of indebtedness is highest in states that practice modern, so-called green revolution forms of agriculture. In Africa, more than a third of agricultural lands have stopped responding to fertilizers due to a lack of organic carbon in the soil, and this number is rising. You know all about the adverse uh, impacts of climate, biodiversity, and pollution, of course. That's why you're all here, to make the investments that can drive the kind of change we need at scale, as the minister just pointed out. But the key thing is that you're also here because you care, and that is the beginning of the good news section of my talk. In very simple terms, building an economy that rewards care and the duty of care is what we are calling the stewardship economy. Care for the planet, care for people, both together and simultaneously. There is a very strong investment case to be made for transitioning to a stewardship economy. My optimism comes from more tried and tested parts of our economy, where care has been both valued and validated. For instance, there is overwhelming evidence that investments in public health deliver huge returns for individuals, for society as a whole, and for investors. Here are two examples from the US. Every dollar spent on workplace wellness was associated with a $3.27 decrease in medical cost and a $2.37 decrease in absenteeism costs. Here's another example. Recently, the EPA estimated that the Clean Air Act of 1970 had a benefits to cost ratio of more than 30 to 1, simply by improving air quality and emissions, resulting in better health and economic welfare. A recent WHO report on public health for Europe offered three key investment pathways, which I'm going to lean on uh, to a great extent today with only slight modifications. Firstly, the well-being, health and security pathway, and for humans, this means increasing life expectancy, improving quality of life and well-being, building human capital, enhancing labor productivity and activity, and ensuring national and global health security. For the planet, this means improving soil organic carbon, soil and above ground biodiversity, improving nutrition from production to consumption, paying attention to one health, reducing waste, water use, and greenhouse gas emissions. Secondly, there is a social and equity pathway, which is about reducing the well being, health, and welfare gaps along social gradients, building social capital, creating political stability and achieving equity for women, young people, and the poorest. In the US alone, one study has suggested that poverty kills more people than toxic agents and motor vehicle accidents combined. Finally, and thirdly, the economic and innovation pathway. This offers many possibilities, either directly or through induced economic effects. For instance, providing employment and decent jobs for example, in agroforestry and agroecology as they transform the way agriculture takes place today. Or establishing and repairing infrastructure, including ecological infrastructure. For instance, restoring forests and watersheds or mangroves or planting the right kinds of trees on farms for multiple benefits. Removing barriers to payments through digital money, building capacities to manage more resilient, productive and sustainable land management systems including through insurance and ecosystem service valorization, developing whole new value chains and portfolios of value chains, in enhancing labor through technology, building skills, and much, much more. Therefore, our investments must focus on the stewards, and you've heard from some of them today, especially those in indigenous communities, 
who are caring for the land and our futures. We must focus on stewardship, which is increasingly recognized as a pathway for action. And finally, on connecting these at multi multiple points within nested scales as part of a transition to a stewardship economy. In conclusion, a transition to a stewardship economy and investments that reflect care and reward a duty of care will help find the balance between nurture and use of nature and humans alike. Thank you.